Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing a Q&A video on the previous about four or five videos. And like I always say, I feel so bad that I can't get to all of the questions. It's not that your question isn't important. Um, it's just that we randomly go through and just pick out questions and unfortunately I just can't answer them all, but I would love to, but I will do the best I can. I have a lot of questions here and I will answer them as fast as possible. I'll try not to be long-winded about this. So before I start here, I kind of want to warn you about the lighting in here. Um, we have a partly cloudy day outside, so that means if the sun comes out, it gets really, really bright in here with all the windows, and then if it disappears like it is right now behind clouds, it's just right kind of the lighting. Um, so I just wanted to warn you on that. If it does come out, I may end up almost disappearing on you guys, but I'll do the best I can here. I don't want to always run over to my camera and adjust my lighting. So the first questions here are from the video where I use Dixie Bell paint to paint a piece of furniture. And Kim Carter asks, what is the purpose of the wax? Um, I had also used the Dixie Bell wax to go over top of the, the paint. And wax really does an amazing job of just protecting paint, first of all, and then it also makes it a lot smoother and harder like if you want to clean the piece then it's just a nice clean hard finish if that makes sense so it's definitely uh, you know its purpose would be to protect the paint and often a lot of these paints are so flat or so matte that you almost need something uh, over top or if you you know go over it with a rag or something your rag will just curl up so that is kind of the purpose of the wax uh, the next question is, do you wash drop cloths prior to using them or turning them into curtains and table runners? Yes, I do. I always, I buy all my drop cloth. So far, I've always bought it at Walmart. I'm kind of checking into other places, but uh, that has worked well for me over the years and I always wash them before I use them. It just really softens them up and they do not shrink. I don't notice that they shrink at all. So Tammy is asking about repainting her bathroom cabinets. She had previously used a polyurethrane to uh, top coat them, probably an oil base, and she just wondered about painting over that. Uh, yes, I definitely paint over that stuff. Um, I would probably, if it's really glossy, I'd probably sand over it just a bit to kind of dull it up. I, I wouldn't strip it. I'm just really against using any strong chemicals like that to strip you know, wood if you don't need to. Um, so I'd probably, if it, yeah, again, if it's really smooth, I'd do the sandpaper. And if it's not really that smooth even, sometimes I just go over with a crud cutter. That's like a liquid sandpaper and just uh, kind of dole it up that way. And I think nowadays the paint is really good or the paint that I use, it's like a paint and primer in one is kind of my go-to paint. And I, I just feel like it really sticks to surfaces better than maybe it used to in the years past. And then also there's the chalk paint options. Those really stick well to anything. So good luck with that. It sounds like fun repainting cabinets. Peggy is asking, how long are you letting each coat of paint dry before you go into the next coat? Um, guys, I don't follow rules when it comes to letting paint dry. Um, I'm an impatient person, I admit it. It's probably one of my weaknesses, but um, I usually just feel it. If it feels dry to the touch, I will repaint it right away. And it's always worked for me over the years. I don't wait the three or four hours that you're supposed to. Like, how could you ever get anything done if you'd wait that long is my question. So maybe you don't want to follow my advice because I it's probably not what your can will say, but um, it's worked for me. Uh, Thrifty Little Birdie asks, what did you use on your walls for the shiplap? Um, in the living room, we have some shiplap. And I just used a, I think an eighth inch thick plywood that I just cut into strips and then pinned it onto the wall. You could also glue it on, but I didn't glue ours on because I always think, what if I want to remove it someday? And then there's all these glue stains underneath. So I just pinned it and that seems to work well. So Allison asked, do you ever have a problem with all your whites matching in a room? Um, we just talked about that earlier today, my husband and I, and I was telling him how many different colors of white are actually in our home here. It doesn't bother me, so I guess that's a personal preference. I can see where maybe some people would be bothered by it. I have some that are more maybe the gray undertone and then some that are more beige or cream and then the bright whites like this table would be the bright white and then our trim is that color too and I even see a door here in front of me that almost looks bluish white so I guess I 
like I said, it just doesn't bother me. But Tanya asks what size Dixie Belle paint I used. Um, I remember using every last drop of it and I believe it was probably the eight ounce. I don't have my container anymore, so I'm not 100% sure, but uh, just in my mind, it seems like it would have been about eight ounces. So I had to smile about this next question here or comment. Uh, Mary says she was watching my videos as she painted her all her dark furniture in her home. Uh, that's awesome. I love that I can inspire like that because it just brings so much cheer to it doesn't all have to be painted white, but whatever your color is or whatever changes you want to make, it's just amazing how that can actually change your life almost to just have a new look in a room. So her question is, did you decide to take the TV out of the family room? I did not. We at one time we did not have a TV in the family room because I just didn't really like how it, it didn't really fit in with the decorations and I just wasn't for that look I guess and we we have a room upstairs where we have a TV so we always just kind of use that room but now we do have one down here and I don't mind it's up against the shiplap wall I think it kind of looks okay there so I'm getting used to it. So the next questions are from the last Q&A video. I picked out some questions from that. The first one here is, I love the swinging chair you're sitting in. I get a lot of questions about that. Where did you get it and what did it cost? I got it from Amazon and I will link it down below. Um, I just love that swing. It's so comfortable. And I think it was, I wanna say $80, either 60 or 80, but I, I think it was maybe around $80. Um, I think the, the more you pay for them, the more uh, you know sturdy or the longer they will probably last just with anything. Uh, Nancy asks, do you feed the birds throughout the winter? Yes, I do. I feed them daily. Um, I just feel with our winters, especially here in Ohio, which this winter it wasn't too bad with cold, but um, I just always feel so bad for the birds. I feel they probably don't have a lot of food out there in the woods, so I definitely feed them and we do get a lot of birds. I actually feed them throughout the summer too. So Christiane asks, do you dedicate a portion of your day or week to filming content and editing in order to have time to do house chores and spend time with family? Good question. I'm still working on that. I think it's gotten better than it was at one time. Um, it's just with anything, sometimes you have to do something for a half year or a year or whatever until you actually find a routine. I feel I'm still not quite there, but it, like I said, it's getting better. Uh, where I just sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard if you have your business in your own house. I'm sure a lot of you probably have that too. You can't just clock out and go home. Um, it's just sitting down there, you know, uh, calling out to you or that's how I feel sometimes. And I love my job. It's not like I, I, I don't even, I almost don't like to call it a job because I feel it's still more like a hobby, but um, I definitely struggle with that where I just feel I have to go downstairs and work if I know there's stuff you know waiting on me down there but then I remind myself it's not that important you know my family comes first sometimes I just have to uh, just quit and then you know come up here and do what's really important um, but thankfully our boys are you know that age where they are kind of they have their own things they want to do with their friends or whatever so it's not the same as when they were younger so I really noticed that you know they're more self-sufficient I guess you could say and independent and I do have certain days like Fridays I like to do the cleaning like general cleaning and Mondays is often my day to sit down and plan a menu um, get groceries if I have my meals planned out for a week I'm in a much better shape that has really helped me because I always cook a meal for like our supper and I just think it's so nice to just go in the fridge and just read my paper and see what's on the menu and just go to the refrigerator or freezer or whatever and it'll be there. I don't have to scramble about trying to decide what I wanna make. So that has really helped me out too. But like I said, it's still not, I don't have it down pat yet, but I think I'm getting closer. So the next comment here is, could you please share what green color you used for the light fixtures in the kitchen? That kind of made me smile because there's a story behind that. Um, I had this green color in mind that I wanted for those lights and I went into the hardware, uh, browsed through all of their samples and of course could not find this color and I know the girls there in the hardware and I wasn't afraid to ask to see more samples so they dug out all of their sample books and we went through everything and of course I couldn't find the color I wanted. So the kind girl that was helping me um, started to mix some paints together for me and we kind of put in there what we thought. Um, I kind of show, I think I had a picture of something that I wanted that green color of. And anyway, we ended up 
coming up with the color that I had in my mind. So I was really pleased with that. So it really has no name. I can't give you a name for it, but I still have the paint can downstairs and I will make sure to copy the, the formula off and put it in the description box down below. So if you go into your hardware or Lowe's or wherever you get your paint, you should be able to give them that formula and they will be able to match it. It might not be exact because some of the paint companies have their color varies from you know company to company, but you should be able to get you know almost the same color. And I'll try to get a video clip here to zoom in on those lights so you know what I'm talking about. So Mitzi asked, did you make the drop cloth sign behind you on the wall? Uh, yes, I did. I just uh, made, I used my Silhouette Cameo, cut out stencils, and then painted them onto the fabric. So Art Lady asked, did you make your faux fireplace? And if so, do you have a video? I did make it years ago, and I don't have a video, unfortunately. Um, I, it was before I had my channel, so I, I know I took pictures, but not a video. I really wasn't that hard to make. Um, I should just make another one and just show you guys because I've had more questions about that already, but um, there's actually no fireplace there. I wish there was. Uh, we do have a chimney in the wall behind um, that mantle, so I think it would almost be possible to maybe eventually put one in, but I just wanted it to decorate with basically, um, just you know, have a mantle to fix up during Christmas especially. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. And she has another question about uh, when we left the Amish, I had talked a little bit about that on my last Q&A. You say your mom and sister left. Did your dad leave also? Yes, he did. Mom and dad left at the same time. Uh, maybe I didn't make that clear. Uh, so JG asks, what is your least favorite chore and have you found ways to make it less daunting? I had to think about this one. I can't really think of anything I just hate to do, although I, I have things that I do that I don't just love doing, um, you know, maybe washing dishes and I have to kind of be in the right mood to even clean. Um, I enjoy it if I'm in the right mood. It's really fun, you know, but sometimes I'm just busy with other things that I'd rather be doing. I've found that if I sometimes set little goals like to be finished by a certain time, that kind of helps to motivate me. Um, I don't like cleaning an oven. I just, I probably should do it more often than it probably wouldn't look as bad as it sometimes does and would be easier to clean, but um, that like inside the oven and then behind it, like pull it forward and clean behind it, that's just not fun to me. I probably do it maybe once a year, cleaning behind the oven and the fridge, uh, but that's probably, that would be a few of my least favorite things to do. And now for the spring home tour video. Uh, Julia says, your house looks so fresh and cozy. Can I ask where you got the little house under the sign that you made? Uh, yeah, I got that at Walmart. It's actually a wax, I don't know had I mentioned it in the vi video or not, but it's a, a wax melter. So inside the house, there's a little container where you put you know, your wax melts in and it's, yeah, it's really neat. I was impressed. I think I paid $15 for it at Walmart. Uh, the next question here is the botanical pictures. Are they already transfers? I'm confused. Um, I hope I explained that right in my video, but I actually printed out those images that are on the banner behind the um, mantle hanging on the wall. Um, I printed those out and then I printed them onto iron-on paper. Um, so I, again, got the images from online and I believe I just, I think I went on Pinterest and actually got them from someone, they were all in one place. I'm pretty sure I shared that link down below underneath the Spring Home Tour video, uh, but I printed them onto the transfer paper, the iron-on paper, and then I ironed them onto the fabric. But I can see where it would be kind of confusing if you've never done that before. Um, so hopefully I, yeah, explained that so you understand. Uh, so Jennifer asked, do you have trouble keeping your walls clean? Do you sometimes get tired of it? She's talking about all the white walls in here. I never grow tired of it. I love white and I have in the past actually painted color on most of these walls already and I always end up painting them white again. So that is why I just choose to keep them white. I'd rather just add a little color here and there with accents than having a wall in color for me. You know, that's my personal preference. And then do you have trouble keeping it clean? I don't think about it. Uh, for me, I mean, I imagine if I have little toddlers around here, uh, you know, there, there might be more, uh, you know, dirt and stuff on the walls. But um, for me, I guess I always think with white, you can at least see where it is and then clean it versus if you have a color, you know, you know it's kind of there, but you can't see it and therefore you probably don't clean it as much. 
So for me, I kind of like that where I can see what is dirty. Uh, so Tammy asks if I would mind sharing the brand and model of the faucet, our kitchen faucet. Unfortunately, I don't have the packaging or anything anymore, but I do remember we got it at Lowe's and it was kind of the in-between, it wasn't the most expensive or the least expensive, kind of the in-between, uh, you know, price-wise, but um, I just love it too. It's nice and high where I can, you know, rinse dishes, large dishes underneath there. Uh, so Mary asks what type of sander that I have. Um, I just love my sander. I'll link it down below. I got it from Amazon. I'm not sure of the brand right now. I'm almost thinking Black & Decker, but don't quote me on that. I really like it. It's I like that it has a little point. Uh, you can get into you know corners and stuff with it. Uh, Linda asks, is the Vintage Garden sign available on my shop? Yes, it is. I will link my shop down below and it should be on there. Uh, Penny asks, did you make the topiary tree in the white and blue container? Uh, yes, I did, and I will also link that video down below. I believe it was a Christmas home tour one, or around Christmas time, one of those videos. Um, I did a little tutorial where I showed you guys how I made them. Uh, Tracy asks about the desk in the living room. Did you paint the inside? Uh, yes, I did, because at times we actually have that lid open where you can see inside, and that's kind of why I painted the inside. That was years ago when I did that, though. Bonnie asks what color and brand of paint I used on the vanity for the bathroom. Um, it is Do It Best brand paint. It's often what I go for. Um, our local hardware has it, and I love it. Um, it is Best Look, and the color is, is from Valspar. They had matched it for me. Um, the name is Filoli Ballroom. That is F-I-L-O-L-I -L -L Ballroom. And I just, yeah, I love that color green too. Sarah asks, where did you find the white lamps in your living room? I believe I got those at Walmart. Mary asks about the inserts of wood you have in your windows. <laughs> That's funny because I hate those inserts. I like how they look, but they're such a hassle to take out, clean the window, and put them back in. Um, they're actually plastic. They're not wood, um, but they just came that way when my parents actually built this house back in the late... 80s early 90s and I think that was a thing back then evidently instead of putting the the grills in between the glass panes they just put them on the top like that um, but it's okay eventually we probably want to replace the windows in here anyway but uh, for now at, at least you know I, I kind of like that look but it's just a hassle to if you want to clean them so Michael asks what software I use to edit my videos and how long does it take to edit a video like this um, I use Adobe Premiere Elements. I love that program. It was for me, it was easy to you know understand or figure out. And then as for how long it takes to edit a video like this, which this one would have been the the Spring Home Tour, um, those are usually fairly easy. Um, it's not a lot of different steps like where I'm maybe doing a trash to treasure or something. But I would say if I have about you know maybe four hours four or five hours to edit a video like that i should be able to finish it but i usually figure you know almost a day to edit a video even if it doesn't take me all day usually by the time i have everything in between done you know i get the video done too i don't just work non-stop on it so the next question here is asking about information on the the pulley light that i have hanging above the sofa in the living room I will link it down below. I actually get a, the shade part and the, the where the bulb screws in from Amazon. And then the antique pulley, I, I got at an antique mall, I believe. Um, Joyce is asking why the fireplace is boarded up. Again, I guess I covered that previously. It is There's actually no fireplace there. I just put the doors on there so you don't see the drywall behind it. And the next video here is the cleaning one. Uh, so Jane says she, she has the Norwex paste but hasn't used it yet. And she says she saw on the label that it says to it may scratch wood or granite or stainless steel. Um, I'm really careful at how I use it. I did notice too that it says that on the label. And often I'll just put a little bit of the paste onto the rag and then even rinse it again just to kind of get rid of that grit or kind of blend it into the cloth because I feel that's probably what scratches is the actual grit. Um, and I just love the clean, fresh smell of it. And it, I think it just shines everything. It does a good job of cleaning. So that's kind of why I use it. I have never used it on my fridge because it is the stainless steel. I should test it on a small area just to see what happens. But uh, so far I haven't, you know, dared to use it because I don't want to, you know, scratch up anything. But uh, for the cupboards, I, I haven't noticed that it scratches. But again, I don't use it as heavily as I would on maybe like a sink or, you know, other surfaces. 
So the next question here is, how is your stenciled floor holding up in the bathroom? Are you seeing any kind of wear on it? It is holding out just beautifully. I'm so impressed. I don't see any signs of wear. It hasn't come off anywhere. Um, I'm actually almost surprised myself, um, but it, we're, we're not extra careful with it. I just use it like I would any other floor and it still looks like it did on day one. So that's, I'm happy about it. Uh, Wilma asks what brand of blender that I have. It is a Black & Decker from Walmart. Lavender Fields asks, what did you use to film this video? I always use the same camera to film all my videos and it is a Canon Rebel T6i and I, I like it. I know there's probably better cameras out there, but for what I do so far, it's worked well. Uh, D Roar says, Mary, I noticed you have two faucets on your sink. What is the second one for? The second, the smaller faucet is a drinking water faucet. Um, we have, it's the same water that comes through the other faucet, but it's just filtered. We have a filter downstairs hanging on the basement wall, um, like a, I think it's called a carbon filter if I'm correct. Um, it just makes it taste a lot better. Uh, we actually used to have spring water in our home until about half a year ago. We switched everything over to city water. It was kind of hard to do, but we were having trouble with our spring and it was um, you know, either spending a lot of money on it or just switching to the city water. And that's what we ended up doing. Uh, Rachel asks, what is the name of your sweeper? And she goes on to say that she and her husband will be celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary. Wow. Um, in Holmes County, Ohio here, March 5th and 6th. Well, happy anniversary. And who knows, I might run into you there. She says, I would love to run into you. And I sometimes do. I've met some of uh, you guys through um, just, you know, you guys visiting here in Amish country. Um, I frequent Berlin a lot. I often have errands to run in town. So um, who knows, maybe I'll run into you. But yeah, answering your question about the sweeper, I have the Dyson Cyclone V10 and I just love that sweeper. I'll also link it down below in case you're actually interested in it. But I got it from Amazon several years ago and I know it has, it, it has gone down in price, uh, maybe by a couple hundred than what I had paid for it. So it's definitely, you're getting a better deal than what I did, but the same sweeper, which I love. Uh, Melody is asking about some of the Norwex products. Uh, she noticed that I clean my bathroom counter first with the cloth and then uh, wash the toothpaste or the rinse glass with the same cloth. Um, does the cleaning paste have antibacterial properties in it? I don't believe it would because everything's really natural with Norwex, although I don't want to say for sure. Um, I guess I didn't really think about that, you know, cleaning the counter and then the glass. I just tried to make everything look nice and clean. I'm not sure. Um, I just, I guess I don't think about that. Maybe I should more. And then as far as laundering the the Norwex products, I often just gather maybe once a week, I'll gather all my Norwex products, any cloths that I used or towels and just put them separately in the washer. And then I also have the Norwex laundry detergent that I use for that. And I'll put my Norwex link down below in case any of you guys are interested in their products. I, I don't use you know all of their things, but I have some things that I just love from them and I would that I would recommend to, to people to use. So Amy asks, is your wainscoting backsplash a wallpaper type or the actual real thing? It is the real thing or it's not an expensive. It was a pine board I used years ago to, I actually installed it myself. Um, it's really not that hard. I just, you know, cut it to fit underneath the cupboards and then pinned it to the wall and painted it. Uh, but it is kind of coming apart at places. We have a really dry house here during the winter because we have to heat a lot and then it kind of pulls apart and then during the summer with the humidity it kind of you know pushes back together again but um, it's been there like I said for years and it would be kind of in need of an upgrade eventually but I still love the look of beat it board I think it's just such a cozy look and then the last video I have here is the plate rack one and I just took a few questions from that I think just two of them because um, I knew I would be running out of time by then. But um, Tammy says, is wondering about the blue and white plates on my plate rack. Um, I just love those plates too. And I admit they're actually my sister's plates. <laughs> you probably see them behind me here. Um, they are, I'm just borrowing them from, for now until I find some of my own, but she purchased them at antique malls. And I eventually wanna go antiquing around here to look for some, but. 
I'm not sure, I looked on the back, there's no name or anything on the back, but I also just love that design. It looks so vintagey, and I just love the color of them too, but hopefully I'll be able to find something very similar. So Deborah asks what kind of paint I use for the plate rack, and I apologize for not putting that in the video, but I'm pretty sure I used, again, Do It Best brand paint, the best look, and probably a satin sheen. And the color, I believe, was ultra white. It was just a non-tinted color, like you'd buy just buying the can off the, the shelf. It, they didn't tint it or anything, but it's a really nice bright white color. So guys, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me here. Um, I always feel these videos would be a tad boring, but I appreciate you guys watching and I hope I answered some of your questions correctly. And again, I apologize for not getting to them all. I do have one thing I want to mention here. I had done a mop giveaway, was it last week or a couple weeks ago? And I am having a hard time reaching the person that was actually the winner. Um, so if you want to check your Instagram messages, someone out there has about three or four messages from me and I am almost ready to redraw a name. Um, I realize if you're like me, you don't always have all your notifications turned on. I totally understand that, but I just felt so bad if you would later find the message and saw you were a winner and it would be too late. So I believe the name was, I want to see, I want to say Renee, it was spelled R-E-N-E -E, Easter. So if that is you, make sure to check your messages and you just won a Norwex mop. So I wanted to mention that I have a really fun video coming up on Wednesday. It is a trash to treasure, one of my favorite ones to film. And I remember somewhere along the line, I saw a question from someone asking about what I would do with an old drawer, like to repurpose it or upcycle it. And one of my projects on the video coming up here on Wednesday is actually an old drawer. So stay tuned for that if you're curious what I ended up doing with it. There's so many different things you can do with a drawer, but um, I kind of picked a fun thing to do with it and I wonder what you guys will think. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you are having a great week and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Bye.